Hey, this is Mick West of Medibank.org. Uh, if you think my videos are a bit too technical sometimes, then you should probably stop watching now because this is going to be a very, very, very technical video. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how this refraction simulator that I wrote actually works. I'm going to have a look at uh, the source code and the mathematics and the equations behind it. And I'll try to do it reasonably quickly so you can uh, just look at the actual stuff yourself. Uh, hopefully I should give you enough of an understanding. So uh, refraction simulator is uh, basically simulating the effects of atmospheric refraction. And you see here uh, we have rays of light which are coming from the camera. This is using the principle of uh, reversibility of light. Uh, it goes exactly the same way through air regardless of whether you go this way or this way. Now of course light is actually going from the target to the camera, but we can actually cast rays from the camera to the target and it goes along the same path. Uh, so what we want to do in terms of code is that we start out from a position over here where the uh, camera is and we give the ray a direction, which I'm going to start getting technical now. I use a two-dimensional vector. I actually use a two-dimensional unit vector, which is a vector of length one and that specifies which way the line is pointing. And I store its position as another 2D vector, an XY vector, where X is the horizontal distance and Y is the vertical distance. Uh, zero, zero in this uh, situation is the ground beneath the feet of the uh, where the guy with the camera is theoretically standing. So if we move him way up here, uh, zero, zero in our coordinate system is this position right here. And so this is y and this is x. All right, so again, uh, the nuts and bolts of the code are tracing a ray, which means we start with a ray at a certain position, which we call p, and we have a direction, which I specify with a unit vector, which I call u, and I trace it forward one step at a time along a distance, uh, d, and uh, we move through this medium which is a varying refractive index, and the actual refractive index uh, affects uh, how the ray actually curves. So we move it a step forward, we see as it moved up or down a little bit, and then we move it up or down, and then we move it again, and we keep moving, and eventually we'll hit something. And then where we hit it determines uh, what, re what uh, line of that image ends up in the final result. So I uh, probably lost you all already, but I'm going to plow on. Now, if you want to see how this simulator actually works, then you have to uh, look at the source code. And here in Chrome, I can just go to View, Developer, View Source, and the source code will pop up, blah, 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 it's all there. Uh, but there's actually a couple of other files which you can see uh, listed at the top. Let's see, they're gonna be uh, right here. You can click on them to just load them and then you can uh, you can see them here. But another way of doing this is in Chrome, you do view developer and developer tools and it will bring you up this little list that neat, neatly shows kind of the project structure and where the other files are. jQuery is a strand, standard library. library. Uh, the actual, most of the code is actually in the index file, index.html and uh, uh, most of the actual interesting code is in there. Some other stuff is in this file here, c.idenrefraction.js, uh, which has a few equations for calculating the refractive index. Then the curve editor, which is a thing I wrote to easily edit the actual curves. It's not very complicated, it's just Bezier curves, uh, which I guess is complicated. Uh, but you know, that's the, these are the only extra bits of code that are relevant that uh, I wrote. This is just an implementation of standard equations. And this is just editing a curve. Right, back to the index. I'm actually going to show you this in uh, the program I use, which is PHPStorm. And I made the font nice and big so you can see uh, you can see what, what's actually going on. So the heart of the program is this one function here, trace one line. And it's taking a line number, which is actually the uh, line number of the, the actual target image which would be uh, well, the, the, the resultant image, the, re the rendered image. So the line on the screen, basically. Uh, so it's blah, 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 checking to see if it's been done already. It's, it, 
does things asynchronously. So it will do like every one out of 10 lines and then it flags them as being done. And there's an array called rays, which contains uh, all of the lines and has a bunch of bunch of flags in, but not that difficult, uh, not that com complicated, but you can look at the actual structure of the rays array and see the various other fl things in it. Um, we calculate the angle of the ray. Uh, now, obviously when, uh, when a ray is leaving your eye, it goes out at a particular angle. Zero is going to be perfectly horizontal. And this is going to be up at uh, whatever the field of view is, which is 1.5 degrees here. Remember, this is greatly exaggerated, so it looks like it's a fairly wide field of view, but it's only actually 1.5 degrees, which is a very, very narrow uh, field of view. Uh, it's taking x and y as being the start position, which is the uh, the the eye x and y, which is the basically the camera position. And it takes this angle. I don't know what it's doing there. Oh yes, it's just check checking to see if you're going up or down, coloring the lines red or blue. Uh, this is detecting uh, which of the lines is eye level. Not very important, really. Just cosmetic thing. And here, this is where we get to some of the actual mathematics here. Uh, getting the value D to be the uh, step along the, the line, uh, which is how far we're going to go in one step uh, in our ray tracing algorithm. Uh, which is typically the distance to the target divided by 500, I think. Uh, now, we have the unit vector u, which is the direction of the ray. And uh, we just use two variables, ux and uy, to store this. And we're calculating it simply as being the cosine and the negative sign of the angle. Uh, if you want to think about how that actually works, uh, you can think of... Uh, a actual vector d, dx and dy, which is the, the the length d multiplied by the cosine and the negative uh, sine of the angle, uh, and then you calculate the length of that, and then you calculate the unit vector by dividing it by the length. So this gives you the actual uh, offset d. But for our purposes, we're only using the unit vector, uh, so we don't need to have these intermediate values, which you might if you're doing it in a slightly different way. All right. Uh, so for this ray, we are going to build an, an array of line points, uh, which is just point x, y points. And we're going to check to see if we hit the ground, and we check to see if we, uh, we, we check later to see if we hit the target. This is how much we're actually going to trace. We uh, just basically trace the amount uh, that is visible in this diagram here. So we'll trace all the way over to here to see if, uh, you know, we hit something. We, we, we just basically stop if we get, get to this point. And if, uh, if it's a flat uh, Earth, then we actually triple the amount that we trace because we want to see the horizon uh, beyond things. This doesn't work entirely right, and I need to improve that, but uh, that's why I'm doing that, to try to get a more accurate horizon beyond uh, the actual target. Okay, so... Uh, this is the main loop that loops and calculates all of the points in the ray tracing. This, this function call here is the key thing, and which will need the most explanation. It uh, takes as parameters x and y, which is the current position. It takes ux and uy, which is the direction. And it takes d, which is how much of a step we're going to take. So d times ux, uy will give you the new position. And it uh, calls this function here step forward and updates all the values. If it hits the ground, then it flags it uh, and then stops. Otherwise, it adds a new point x, y to the array of line points and it just keeps going until it's either done uh, or it's hit, hit the ground by done being going off the right hand side. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. So let's delve into what step forward does. This is the complicated bit if you don't think it's complicated enough already. So I'm going to zip into that function, step forward. It explains what it does here, given x and y, we're going to step forward by ux times d and uy times d, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So to explain how this works, there's a bunch of, this is what it actually does here. To explain how this works, I'm going to have to show you a diagram because it's quite complicated. Okay, 
Now, you probably can't read this, but it says simple integration of a point P of distance D in direction U. Here's our point P. Uh, the point P is the point on a ray of light, but really you've got to think of the motion of light as being the motion of a wave front. You see this squiggly line here is meant to be a wave front. So it's the, the ray of light is actually just one point on a wave that's going along. And we have this point P on that wave, and we want to know if it's gone up uh, distance D along direction vector U, uh, what will be the new point, uh, P dash, which is sometimes called P prime, but uh, I'm old British, so I'm calling it P dash. And what will be the new direction U dash? So the mathematics we're doing here is how do we take P and U and turn it into P dash and U dash? So the old way I did it was that I would calculate uh, two points A and B on either side of B, uh, either side of P on this wave front. Uh, then I would calculate the points A dash and B dash. And the way I do that is that uh, A and B will be in different parts of the medium. So they're in different refractive indices. So the refractive index will be different uh, for A and B. So it'll move at different speeds through uh, through this. The uh, speed of light in a medium is uh, inversely proportional to the refractive index. So you have to divide uh, the speed of light by the refractive index. And um, that gives you the actual speed of light and that'll tell you how far it can go. So this point P will move based on whatever the refractive index is here. This point A will move based on whatever the refractive index is here and end up in A dash. So you could calculate these two points, A and B, then calculate some new points, A dash and B dash, and then that would give you this line here, and you can use this line here to find out what the new U dash would be, because it's simply the vector which is perpendicular to this line. Uh, I do a something of a, an optimization or a simplification here. Instead of calculating these points, A and B, I just directly calculate the value of u uh, from uh, this value g, where g is the uh, unit gradient of the uh, refractive index field at p. And that's uh, you're perhaps a little bit hard to understand. Uh, <laughs> like I say, it's probably all rather hard to understand, but. Uh, the refractive index gradient, that is how much is, uh, how much is the value of n changing uh, in the x direction and in the, in, in the x direction and in the y direction per foot. Uh, and yeah, that is a value g, which is a vector value, obviously it's two gx and gy. Uh, because it's how much is it changing in X, how much is it changing in Y, and it's represented by an arrow here because it's going to be a direction. It will be uh, not necessarily a unit vector because uh, it will have a certain length and the, the steeper the gradient, the longer this, this G will be. Uh, so the math is not too long, but it's perhaps difficult to understand. So let's go through it. U is the unit vector of the ray direction. We already know that it's this value here. It's the unit vector along this, uh, this line of travel. Uh, P is the current ray point where we're starting. A and B are two points on the way from perpendicular to U, uh, which uh, they're going to be virtual points, but right now imagine they are actually real points. Uh, v, now I see V as a, a dash, uh, as a little underscore, which means that it's a vector quantity. V is the left rotated U. So here's U and here's V, it's rotated counterclockwise to the left uh, by 90 degrees. So it's the vector perpendicular uh, to, to U. N is the refractive index at P. So it's the refractive index at this position here. Uh, G, as we said, is the gradient of N at P. Uh, now, this is just explaining how you calculate uh, rotated right and rotated left values. Uh, rotate right is just simply you, uh, it's y minus x, and rotate uh, left is minus y minus x. And let's explain by this little diagram here. It should be fairly straightforward. All right, so as we have all these values, we can uh, figure out certain things. Uh, we know that a is p plus v. 
uh, we're going to use an offset of one. So we just use the unit vector uh, to get the, the actual position of A. And so B, of course, is P minus V because it's just in the other direction. Then we can calculate uh, A dash as P plus V. Uh, A dash is A plus uh, U times D uh, multiplied by N plus G dot V. This is, uh, <laughs> this is where you might get uh, a little confused. But basically what that does is it uh, takes the position A and it adds uh, U times D scaled by, U D will be this length here from P to P dash, scaled by the refractive index at P, which is N, plus G dot V, uh, which is the component of G along V and uh, which gives you how much the refractive index is changing in this direction from P to A. And similarly, we do the same thing for B dash. We take B and we add uh, U times D, which is this vector, scaled by N minus uh, G dot V, which is going to be how much G uh, varies in this direction. Uh, so that will actually give you a virtual A and B. So now we can calculate another vector, b dash to a dash, which is this one here, uh, which is going to be a dash minus b dash, which if you take these, just works out to be something nice, which doesn't involve uh, a or b. So it's 2v plus 2ud uh, times g dot v. And we can work out quite simply that uh, u dash, which is the new unit vector in this direction, is the right rotated uh, vector b to a. So which is B to A is that vector, and then we reset it right 90 degrees, and then we take the unit vector, which is what I'm indicating with these bars on either side, and that gives you a new direction vector, uh, which gives us this nice little equation here. U dash is uh, right rotated uh, V plus UD times G dot V, uh, which uh, slightly simplifies to this. Uh, U dash is U plus V times D, times g dot v because uh, u and v are the right rotated versions of uh, v and u. Uh, then we have simply p dash is p plus u times d. Now we could multiply that by n times p, but it doesn't really matter uh, because the uh, it doesn't really make much difference. But I think I do actually do this, but I'm not, not sure. But if you can introduce this term into the code, it doesn't really make very much difference. All right, now I've thoroughly confused everybody. We can go back to the code and we can see that what we have is just simply an implementation of those equations. Uh, we have you know, g dot v, dg dot v, and then uh, this, the new ux1, uy1, which is the what I, I do for u dash uh, calculated here, and then uh, normalizing it here by dividing by the length and then returning it and I do yeah, x equals yeah I don't actually add in the refractive index uh, term there you can you try it with and without but it doesn't actually make any difference so I left it off uh, for speed okay that is how that works now I must admit uh, it's very complicated sounding I wouldn't expect most people to understand it but if you want to understand how the code works then hopefully that would lead you through it and you can go through it step by step um, and uh, follow along with what I just did and check the math and then see that uh, these equations here in step forward uh, match that math. Uh, okay, so other things in the code uh, that are math related are how do we actually calculate the refractive index? Uh, the refractive index is calculated, let's see, uh, in this function somewhere here. It uses this function here, gradient, because we're using the gradient of the refractive index. So how do we calculate the gradient, gx and gy? We go into that, and we see gradient x and y is just simply taking uh, the refractive index at uh, half a foot on either side, and then returning the difference between them, and that gives you the... Uh, gradient for the x and the gradient for the y. So it's, uh, it's very, very simple, really. So what does this function do? Refractive index, let's pop into that one. All right, 
calls this function here, which is refractive index from h. And that function here is uh, ooh, it's a, it's a uh, virtual function that is actually comes from uh, this more this function here, which calculates the function, uh, which ultimately calls this function here, refractive index old, uh, which the old just indicates as before I did all this this fancy optimization and uh, and and uh, what are doing a bit of a bit of a uh, Catmull Rom spline interpolation down here, uh, which is an optimization. So the actual relevant uh, code for how we calculate the refractive index is in refractive index old, which is uh, right here, which uh, just takes the uh, drop into account to calculate the height above the surface. It calls pressure at altitude to calculate what the pressure would be at that altitude, which uses this equation here, uh, which uh, comes from this Wikipedia page. Uh, it calculates the temperature from the curve, from this curve here. You have to look in the, it's just basically interpolating along this curve. It's very simple, nothing complicated there. Uh, it takes the RH from the default RH, if uh, you're not editing the RH, which will be 50 generally. If you are editing the RH, it comes from this graph here. And, and similarly, it's interpolated along that curve. And then the refractive index is calculated from that temperature and the pressure and the RH by calling this function here, air index sidor, uh, which if we go into that, we can see is the full sidor equation uh, from NIST's website, which is, you know, sidor is well known in the scientific literature as being the most accurate uh, equation, but of course it's incredibly complicated. Uh, there's actually other equations you can use in here. There's the Edlin equation, which is a bit simpler, or there's this uh, NIST shop for equation, which is relatively simple and straightforward. Uh, but uh, that essentially is all of the math that is relevant in, uh, in the simulator. So if, uh, hopefully that will explain to people who want to know and want to put in the time how it actually works. And uh, if you want to replicate it, or if you want to verify it, or if you want to improve it, uh, then it should give you a good understanding of uh, the technical details behind it. There's other stuff like how it does the rendering, but that's just you know straightforward programming uh, and just basically data management. It's not really very uh, interesting. The actual uh, technical stuff is this stuff right here, the mathematics, the equations, the implementation of the, those equations and how we step through them uh, with our uh, gradient. Uh, there's, there's various issues with it, like uh, the step size, uh, the calculation of the gradient is uh, you know, based on a step of one, uh, and uh, you know, things could be improved, and it's not the same as the, uh, the, the formula that Andy Young and Walter Bislin use, which uses curve segments, but that is based on a much simpler uh, version of the refractive index, essentially. It's using this very simple calculation, which doesn't really use the full Sidor equation. So even though it's more accurate in some ways than it's going through a curve, it's less accurate in this using this very, very simple equation, which is more, resembles more the, uh, the NIST equation here. All right, so I'm gonna sign off because uh, I think I'm done for now. So if anybody sat through all that and they have any questions, then uh, let me know.